Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its mission, to explore strange new worlds, to discover new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. I found on goodoldgames.com had to give this a try. A game I played quite a number of years ago, but I didn't really have a computer at the time, so I couldn't really get into it. So I do remember the first mission pretty well. What do you say we jump into this thing? Demon World. Yeah. Though the Enterprise's primary mission is peaceful exploration, the galaxy holds many surprises. To be prepared, we are conducting a mock battle with the USS Republic. Captain Patterson reports the Republic is in position and ready to begin, Captain. The Republic is arming weapons and raising shields. I suggest we do the same, Captain. Raising shields. Now, well before, like, Star Trek Bridge Commander or anything like that arming came about, weapons. this was basically the best place you had to go to get, like, this kind of gameplay like the Star Trek game or anything. Crazy damage. Target analysis. Oh. They took much Target less damage. Off. Damage. Damn. I kind of got screwed in that exchange. Probably. Probably avoid. Right. Up line. They beat me. Not my engine. It's just a simulation, Scott. Captain Patterson says better luck next time, sir. Lowering shields and disarming weapons. Message coming in from Starfleet. On screen, Lieutenant. Jim, the Enterprise is ordered to travel to Pollux 5. The natives report that alien life forms have been attacking the settlers near a mine at Mount Idol. You are to report to the High Prelate of the Colony. The settlers are members of the Acolytes of the Star Sect. The description of the attackers vary, but all say that the attackers resemble creatures from many Earth religions known as demons. Starfleet wants you to determine the nature of these creatures and to resolve the situation without bringing harm to the colonists. Starfleet out. Okay. We just had like a ship-to-ship uh, -ship battle. And uh, like, I couldn't really say much about it except battle ended a little quicker than I was expecting it to. I definitely got the bad end of that exchange. But the game does a lot, like, it maps a lot of different functions that the characters will be playing out to buttons on the keyboard, like hit W. Arming weapons. Arms weapons. Oh, all that. Disarming weapons. S brings up Raising the shields. shields. Lauren shields, Cap. So, if for whatever reason you wanted to, you can go pick fights with your shields down or your weapons. I don't know how long she. Damage, uh. Damage control to go and click on what things you want Scotty to start repairing. I shot it. Nothing's damaged. Engines so repaired, Captain. Nothing, uh, nothing to think about there. Oh, look at that. Didn't realize you could do that. And, uh. Kirk. James. Phone name. Captain James Tuggerius Oh, God, Kirk. I'm not listening to that Current shit. Captain of the US. But anyway. We gotta go. Uh, jump to a uh, different star system. And the thing is, they never, uh, part of old school anti piracy techniques, because you couldn't really stop a person from copying discs, was to make it so they needed some physical piece of something from the game package in order to be able to play the game. This was their method of it. There are like 20 planets here that you can choose from. Only one of them is our actual destination. Um, where, where are we supposed to go? <laughs> Crap. Uh, I'm not sure. I can't remember what they said we needed to go. 
Eh, hell, I'll just pick a place and then we'll go and live with the, uh, I think it was, oh, anyway, since, even if you knew where you were supposed to go or the name of the place you were supposed to go, it doesn't mean you could pick it out on this star field. And that was uh, something you were supposed to have the manual for. The idea was, if you ripped the game off, you wouldn't have the manual and therefore you wouldn't be able to play it because you couldn't find your way around the map. This is location number 15 on the map. I'm going to assume that that's where we're supposed to go. We're off course, Captain. Okay, there it's are not, not where we're supposed to go. Rapidly. This is a mess now, isn't it? Damage control standing by, sir. Message from the Elastic. On screen, Lieutenant. You shouldn't have come here, Kirk. Now we must destroy you. Raising shields. Ah, shit, they're gonna hit off before. You can't take it, Captain. Arming weapons. Um. <laughs> Oh, damn, that sucked. I sir. Well, anyway, they got some shots off before I got the shields up. So, apparently we're going to have another space battle. These guys aren't terribly aggressive, usually. So, Scotty should be able to get this crap repaired before, uh, before I have too much trouble. They just keep... Damn it, get back here so I can shoot you. Oh, there's two ships. Oh, all right. I'm watching the radar that's like above Kirk's head. Ah! Yeah, thanks, Scotty. Distracted me and shit. They cloak! Crap. Um. It's hard to. I can still see you, fellow. Still see you. Yo, hitting you is kind of difficult. Captain Kirk boldly killing everything in his way. Okay, I got. I think I got him better than he got me, but still, <laughs> I took some damage there. Not too worried about it. What? Come on now. Ow. I don't know if that was the same ship or not. I'm not keeping track of the colors when I do all this stuff. I'm taking some crazy damage now. Target analysis. Oh. He's got some decent damage on him. Although I don't know which ship I'm actually looking at here. Target analysis. Oh yeah, we're damaged more than they are though. Aye, sir. Damn it, Scotty. We need more power. Target analysis. Oh. They cloak and then I can't follow them. And then they get all their damage repaired. Engine fleet. It's, uh, it's infuriating. Target analysis. Unable to comply, Captain. We're under attack. Are we? Are we really? Because I don't see anything attacking me. I just fire blindly off into space, but that's no way to hit anything. Stop moving, or did I get him? <laughs> target analysis. Oh. How can you analyze a target if you can't even see it? I did get quite a bit of damage on him, though. Come on. Come here so I can kill you. Got one. All right. Fifteen wasn't it. <laughs> um, Argos, Argos four. 
Was that it? We're off course. Damn it. Instruments indicate that we have hey, crossed the Romulus. Romulans materializing off the port bar. Damage control stand. Message from the Romulus. On screen. Enterprise, you are in violation of Romulan space. My orders are specific. Hey, it's a bird of prey. I just flew right through the damn thing. Everything is all, um, they couldn't really do 3D graphics in the way that you think of nowadays back in, I guess this was what, the early, early 90s, like 91, 92. So, the way that they did this is kind of like the way they did it with the old Wing Commander games. These are basically sprites flying around in this sort of three-dimensional space. So they don't have to do any sort of like polygonal geometry or anything like that. It's uh I mean for its day, I'd say it's pretty convincing. I mean, nowadays it's kind of bizarre to have the orientation of the ship change and then suddenly it uh snaps to a different perspective on it, you know. Did I get him? No, I did not. Great, I just started a war against the Romulans. That's great. Captain Kirk is screwing everything up. Come on now. No, this is entirely my fault. I will slaughter all of you for my mistake. This aspect of the space combat that we're looking at right now is really only supposed to be like a sort of like ancillary part of the game. Not supposed to be like what you're supposed to do all the time. There were like away team missions that you go down to planets and do stuff. But since I can't find where I'm freaking going, there. I slaughtered the Romulans and now I win. <laughs> May I respectfully remind the captain that we have an accomp- That was a pause button. I'm just running through Orders all- Orders are to proceed to the Pollock system. Pollock system! Boom! Pollock system, I can find that. 19. Pollock system is 19. That's all the way... That's all the way over here. And what are these? These aren't even on the star map. Hmm. Okay, maybe we can actually get this damn mission complete. Oh yeah, no, I'm not gonna get attacked here. Lowering shields, Captain. So disarming the weapons. Might as well take all that crap offline. And I need to go in orbit. Hit the O button. Entering standard orbit. And um, message from my fellow Robert Angadin, sir. Push Welcome, the Enterprise. The High Prelate awaits you. Please, beam down and meet with him. Pollux 5 has recently emerged from an ice age, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... May I respect the... I don't know what I... There we go. Spock, come with me. Mr. Scott, you have the car. This is so much better, gentlefolk. We are honored at your presence, and hope you will find peace here in our haven. Okay, the way the game works Captain out... The floor oh, on this planet damn. is very interesting. I wonder how useful it may be for medicinal purposes. The way this game is going to play out for the remainder of this mission in this episode is to be kind of like a point-and-click adventure game. You have Captain Kirk here, and he looks kind of weird, potato head guy. Click on some place, he walks there. Go and talk to people like this. I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. We have received word that alien life forms are creating problems at your mining facilities at Idle Mountain. Tell me more. 
course, that's not what Captain Kirk has actually said. You actually have some dialogue options. That was choice one. Most high prelate and given, I am honored to meet you. I consider it my divine duty to assist you in any possible way with the spawn of the devil. Been seeing ghosts and boogeymen, eh? I find that a little hard to believe. I'm Captain James T. Kirk. Uh, okay, seeing number ghosts three is obviously what I'm going to choose. I find that a of... Starfleet recognizes our freedom to worship and believe as we see fit, Captain. I'm surprised that you do not share that feeling. Rest assured that Starfleet Command will be informed of your rudeness. Yeah, go fuck Aside yourself. from seeing demons, has any hard data been collected? Any evidence I could see? Demons? Gates of hell? This is the 23rd century. Aside from seeing demons, has any hard... A skeptic would consider everything merely anecdotal or unproven. My people will gladly tell you their own stories, so you need not hear it secondhand through me. What can you tell me about the mine itself? You're wasting the time of a starship capable of destroying this planet with campfire stories? No wonder you were dumped out here in the middle of nowhere. What can you tell me about the mine? Yeah. You're wasting the time of a star... The area is exceptionally stable tectonically, and easy for our machinery to work in, praise God. We've mined for hafnium and a variety of useful trace elements. The deeper we dig, however, the more anomalous the variety of minerals seems to be. Our Ignatius brother Stephen has his own theories about why this might be. Either way, the anomalies inspired brother Canbury to conduct studies inside the mine. Yesterday, he reported discovering a strange door. A gate to hell, surely, for the demons caused a cave-in immediately. Canbury was trapped, unconscious, and the demons prevent us from rescuing him. We can only hope he is still alive. We need your help, Kirk. You may have no respect for our beliefs, but I hope you will look beyond that. Godspeed. Okay. The place that he is talking about is just up here. There's not a whole lot we can do here. Because there's some crap we need to accomplish. Oh! Klingons. Okay. Start making them dead. Oh, took down a red shirt. You see a small explosion, and the Klingon's hand falls to the ground with a dull thud. I guess they don't make Klingons like they used to, sir. Hey, you didn't die? Why is your shirt so tight? I can see you're like everything about you. The Klingon's hand fell to the ground when I Captain, shot it. We registered phaser fire and an unknown energy beam. Is everyone okay? We're fine. Did you register any disruptor fire? No, Captain. Why? Are there Klingons down there? No, just an idea, Kirk out. Fascinating. I begin to suspect that we have stumbled upon something that the colonists would never have uncovered. What is it, Spock? I wish to gather further data before making a definite conclusion, Captain. You take the Klingons' detached hand. Okay, we got... Klingons' detached hand, that's great. We took a... These aren't actually Klingons, but the point they're trying to make. They're just sort of, um, robots. It's not something that you would have probably come up with at this point, but over here, there are berries. You're going to want to take those. You've retrieved a sample of berries. Because we love berries, you know. And we'll head a little bit deeper into the mine. Now, they caused the cave-in. The demons caused the cave-in here. So, we're going to have to go and, uh, phaser our way through this. Which one should I do? Captain, the structure is extremely un... Captain, the structure is ex... Assume firing position. Alright, start shooting. Oh! Oh! Ensign He's Everett. dead, Jim. Ensign Everett, why? Probably shouldn't have worn that shirt today. Assume firing positions. Ah, right, let's try this again. There is no apparent effect. Yeah, because you didn't do anything. Some guy down here. One of the acolytes who was trapped by the rockfall. Looks like he was under it. Okay, I can't talk to him. Let's go get uh let's go get bones to do some of his medical crap. It was a near thing, but he'll live. Yeah, he doesn't look like it. Oh, thank you, kind souls, for saving my life. 
Let me rest here for a little before returning to report this miracle to Prelate Angiven. Prelate Angiven? Anson Everts lies dead, crushed by the boulder. Yeah. It's great. Just leave the Klingon dead bodies here. And leave Ensign Everett back there. This guy's injured. This man is in no condition to talk. Weird alien with bow legs. He is too busy consoling the... I am worried about Brother Chubb. Can you examine him, Doctor? Okay, Chubb. Jim, this man has suffered severe physical injuries to his head and arm. The wounds have been adequately cared for. However, he has developed a new Garian infection. If not treated swiftly, the effects can be fatal. The infection can normally be treated with hypoditoxin, but there's none on the Enterprise. I may be of some assistance. The Lorexian berry grows near the mouth of the cave. If I could acquire it, I would be able to synthesize the hypoditoxin from the berry. Unfortunately, the demons prevent us from approaching the cave entrance. Perhaps you could retrieve it for me. Yeah, is that the only place that they grow? Really? That it? The only place that they grow? Anyway, I already got the berries, but I can't just give him the berries. I gotta go and do all this myself, because these guys won't do jack to help themselves. I got berries. Feed them into this machine. The machine synthesizes a quantity of hypoditoxin. We've got to get this to Brother Chubb as quickly as possible, Jim. I don't think I actually have anything to worry about. He'll survive for as long as I need him to. But we'll go and take care of this now. Thank you. You're most kind. Damn right I am. I headed up the party that sought to rescue Brother Candry. Without warning, the demons appeared and attacked us as we approached the mine. Can you tell us what they look like? Like the demons that have plagued devout folk since before our people left the Earth. Huge, muscular demons with ruddy skin. Truly the manifestation of evil. With bat wings, horns and talons and a pointed tail. God preserve us all. One tore open my arm and I surely would have perished, but for my companions who bore me back down the mountain. The demons didn't follow you? No. Okay. Well, we didn't encounter those, but we did run into some robot Klingons. So they probably ran into some robot demons. Go back over here to some stuff we can do here. We have the robot arm, hand. So, Mr. Spock, see what you can do about that hand. This machinery is delicate, but I have managed to repair the circuitry. How have you repaired it? Have you reattached it to the Klingon it fell off of? I never dreamed that Starfleet would be interested in my discoveries, Captain. You get no response. Yeah, it's a computer. I'm not going to get a response. An old-fashioned computer. It appears to have some type of simulation running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A vintage 801286 of the mid-21st century. It is a fine museum piece. 801286. Ah, uh, what do you want to bet that they're basing that off of the Intel processors that are existed at the time, like the... 8386 and that kind of stuff. 801286. I guess that's where they thought it would have gone by now. <laughs> it's funny. I'm gonna shoot it. Don't you remember the Prime Directive, Captain? Yeah, but I've been slaughtering my way through everything else so far. Why not? Why not continue? Well, anyway, we have. Uh, I think we have everything we could have done here. Um. A glass-fronted display of mineral specimens and... I 
I read a collection of small items of no evident value, I would characterize this as a small museum display, Captain. I never dream. Yeah, 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 yeah. The glass case. Yeah, we'll shoot it open. Cause I want what's in there. Jim, that would destroy the glass case. That's the point. Anyway, we got the robot hand, so we can go back out to the cave and continue our mission. The animations look fairly smooth when the characters are close to the camera. But as they get further away, they get a little jerkier. It's harder to see what's happening. Okay, now that I have the robot hand, I use it on this door here, door panel here. And the hand circuitry triggers a connection and the door opens. Yes. Standing there over top of the dead ensign's head. <laughs> it appears to be an abstract piece of alien art. Yeah. Many alien machines. Fascinating, Captain. It is a diagram of a lunar eclipse of this planet. See how the red sphere, the moon, is casting a shadow on the blue sphere, Pollux 5. This must be a very old piece of work, because this planet's moon was destroyed thousands of years ago. The machinery is waiting for the gravitational pull of another eclipse to activate it. An eclipse that will never come. And one other thing, Captain. This may also be a diagram showing the proper settings on that control panel. This alien construction takes readings of mental activity. It also activates manufacturing equipment related to security and includes a short distance transportation device. So that's what it is. The robot thing, the robots are all born from this machine. It reads the minds of the people that it, um, reads the minds of the people that it, that it's trying to deal with and then manufacture some thing that they fear. So for these um, for these colonists it were demons of um, like um, you know demons and crap. For Captain Kirk and the Starfleet guys they were Klingons because Klingons are all violent and crap. Okay. Um, Something I'm supposed to do in here. You fail to obtain. Um. Crap. Uh. Something I got to do with the computer. An old-fashioned computer. Um, jeez. Hand? Nothing happens. I want the stuff in the glass case. I read a collection of... You get no resp... I never dr... Hmm. Well, what happens next? This study represents a man with a keen mind, Captain. To judge by what I see, there is little which does not interest him. The equipment is antiquated, but practical. You get no response. This place looks real comfortable. A place to combine work, contemplation. Man's got an eye for the beauty of useful things, and for the use of beautiful things. I think we could get along fine. Yeah, yeah. A glass-fronted display of mineral specimens, including a meteor. I never ah, jeez. There's some stuff out of that case I gotta get out, and I can't remember how to get it. This is the kind of thing that frustrated me about a lot of old-fashioned old adventure games. They don't, like, have any sort of clear thing about what you're supposed to be doing. 
I know there's two things I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to do something with the computer. And I'm supposed to do something with... You failed to obtain the glass case. I'm supposed to do something with the computer, and I'm supposed to do something with the glass case. Give me a sec. <laughs> Okay, I figured it out. I had to go and just instead of picking Captain, an actual this appears item. to be a marvel of the Earth. Notice how it models the proper situation for a total eclipse. I had to, instead of clicking an item when I hit the inventory thing, I just click on the computer for it. Mr. Spock, see what you can dig up from that. Captain, this appears to be a marvel of the Earth. Notice. You are interested in my little museum of curiosities? Looks like a pile of junk if you ask me. Yes, tell us about these things. Where did you find all this? Looks like a pile of junk if you ask. Where did you find all this? Uh, here and there. Uh, much of it was brought to me by others exploring widely. Looks like a pile of junk if you ask me. Yes, tell us about these things. I enjoy talking about these treasures. Shall I go into mineral specimens, meteorite, fossil shells, one of the oldest forms I've seen on this planet. Our God makes beautiful things indeed. Shall I go into mineral specimen, meteor fossil, skull of a small alien animal, the skull of a modern Silati, the largest creature native to this planet, yeah, about the size of a house cat from Earth. The Salatis combine a rather insectoid pattern with four-legged reptilian form, including praying mantis-like forelimbs. Shall I go into mineral media skull twist of metal? This chunk of rock is a greatly weathered example of a vanadium tungsten alloy, which doesn't occur naturally. It is my best evidence that the area was previously inhabited. Shall I go in mineral specimens? Boss twist, or would you rather move on to something else? Very well. I can't imagine why, but if you have a further interest in any of this, take what you like. But please remember to return my treasures when you're done with them. Okay, I would actually think that the um, best evidence that the place was previously inhabited would be the friggin' structure built inside the cave, but whatever. Okay, I need two things. I'm gonna need a skull and the metal. I don't know about the rest of the crap. I don't think I need that. Let's go back. You fail to obtain... Gonna play with this a bit. I'm trying to get it so there's only one bar lit up for each one. Oh, what the hell? Welcome to our home. Thank you for repairing our Somnambutron. Or what? Stop. You're trespassing on Federation territory. I welcome you on behalf of the United Federation of Planets. Who are you? Where you come from? We did fix your machine. Can we write the repair bill off against rent on this land? Stop. You're trespassing. We did fix... So the Ferengi are not the only traitors in the universe. Yes, Captain Kirk, excusing the settlers' debts is an excellent way of ensuring that our people will be friends. We call ourselves mm -hmm. Nauians. Thousands of years ago, we saw that meteor impacts were going to cause an ice age. We created this huge underground shelter to preserve our race, keeping us in suspended animation until the planet had recovered. We programmed the machinery to revive us at the next eclipse, but we did not count on the destruction of our moon. Some advanced civilization. How do you know about that? How the hell do you know who the Ferengi are? Perhaps you can tell us about the demons. Some advanced civilization. Perhaps you can... The demons, as you call them, are created by a machine designed to keep intruders away from our sleep chambers. 
It pulls from the minds of any approaching creature their most feared enemy and produces replicas to scare them away. For you and your crew, it was Klingons. For the Tellerites, a wolf demon. And for the other humans, a demon from their religion. On behalf of my people, thank you for waking us. I will turn off the machinery which creates our guardians, so that they no longer bedevil those with whom we now share our home. Oh, woe! Alas! The key is missing. I can do nothing. Even we will suffer the attacks of our own guardians unless the key can be found. I implore you, if you can help, please do so. Oh, Jim, think about that again. skull we picked up from Brother Stephen. Now look at this alien. See the resemblance? Yeah, 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 there. Here you go, buddy. A child? No, I see many differences. This must be what our people who did not slumber have become. Still, I would like to see these remains properly interred according to the precepts of our religion. May I keep this? Of course, I think you will get along well with the Pollux inhabitants, and I'm, I think I should return it to where I got it from. No, I want to keep it as a memento for myself. Of course, I think... Okay, I think I just decided to start killing this guy. There is no need for violence, Captain. <laughs> okay, we actually have the key. It's this metal chunk. Nothing happens. You fit the key into the slot, but you cannot find a way to turn it. You found the key. I can now turn off the machinery creating our guardians, and no more sentience shall be at risk. Surely the Holy One smiles upon us all. I have no way to thank you, Captain. But please carry this request from my people to yours. We have much ancient knowledge we can share, and we would like to join your Federation. Go in peace. I will be glad to accept your application to the Federation. We shall have a diplomatic envoy sent to make the final arrangements. We look forward to meeting them. We also look forward to having discourse with the colonists. Farewell. May the Holy One bless you. Live long and prosper. Yes, this Kirk to Enterprise. One, uh, Beam us up, Mr. Scott. Yeah. And that's the end of the mission.